Steven's got a little uh, 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 building he's going to show us. And then after we do a few calculations on a simple structure, we can show you an example of something that it shows you how to use the result that you've now calculated. <clears throat> so uh, we're losing our display. It's bouncing on us. The display is blinking. OK, it's, it's in. Yeah, just make sure it's in. Yeah, that's what's happening. Right there is a little, a little squirrely. Here, drape it over this way. I need this. Yeah. Drape it up and put a little relief on it right there. Okay, it's it's. <clears throat> okay, now it's back. So don't touch it. Yeah. Okay. So every time you go to touch the computer, it's gonna, is it gonna wiggle on you? Can you? you do you want to come out this way a little bit so you can see? <clears throat> it, well, it's got a little bit of length. You can get. Just push it over here, so you can see your screen. Just to make sure that you're, <clears throat> you need a little bit of video feedback there. Okay, there it is. Okay, simplified building. Go. Uh, I don't know. It does it give you a little bit more visibility? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Neat. Okay, so I'll try to I'll try to read along as we go. If you give me one or two hints, I'll I'll be able to I'll be able to see what's happening here. So you apply your structure, you build your your baseline plot view, then you build your height of your structure. It's pretty straightforward. That gets you the basic construction, and then you pick your did you pick your LPL level already? Yeah, and boom, there it is. So you, you do have to know your building geometry, right? But then everything else comes out of the software for you so that your separation distances at your corners where you're intending to put your, your lighting rods is then shown. And then you can start building a more complicated mesh to reduce the separation distance because it does allow and it does automatically calculate for the multiple down conductors that you've installed. And then that plugs into the factors of the S calculation and uh, then out comes the separation, the, the, uh, the new distance. So if you added, if you've got a corner of the building that you know is full of radios, then you can go and fix one corner. You don't have to do it to the whole structure. You can tweak the, the design to reduce separation distance and maybe avoid having to do complicated measures at some corner of the building. So it, it gives you a lot of, of the versatility early in your design process to, to get an intuitive feel, what should my design look like? <clears throat> and you know, where, where do I have to be more concerned and optimize it if there's if some factor in the, in the separation distance is too, too high? You can't avoid, you're gonna be within that space. <clears throat> okay, so do you want to show then our, uh, uh, it's, it's really fun, it's really finicky on you here, dude. Do you want to share the, uh, uh, that just a couple of PowerPoint slides then? So after you go through and do those calculations, you get all your results, it generates the reports for you, so it's all documented so that you've got a, a, a formal, set of calculations that you can show for your certification. <clears throat> Generates all the reports, and then you can do things. Um, wow, it's really, really finicky on you. So then you can do a more complicated structure and you can show the the outline of where you would need your down conductors and your cross, sort of the, the building mesh that's across the surface. And from that, you can calculate all your separation figures and show if the HVI product is sufficient for that location because you, you out pops the number seven in centimeters. And we can go to our product tables and show that that product has 
with up, up to 90 centimeters of separation equivalent space, but you're going to install it at zero separation to the actual target victim. So, the, wow, it's really being squirrely on you. <clears throat> so then we can validate that the product's gonna be suitable. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take a little laser. So you can go through all your, where all your air terminals are going to be located. You can validate that the product is suitable. You can validate that there's nothing around it in the, in the construction. And then do your, uh, there was a nice slide that you liked that had the overlay of. You can go ahead and use that sort of So then you can overlay and build your whole system then. You can, step by step, you're gonna look at, you're gonna take that set of calculations, you're gonna prove where you, uh, that the product's properly applied, and then you can show step by step where the, where the actual, so this was the calculated mesh. This is what the, the uh, in, in design software, now you can actually build the, the CAD model of what it should look like, the, the ideal CAD model. So you have your ideal calculations, you have a sort of an ideal CAD model, and then you can show that your, uh, where your physical, in this case, we were, we were installing product, the HVI product, on the customer's light poles. And the risk is that it's gonna side flash into the light circuit. It, once it's in the electrical system, then it's gonna it, uh, sort of pollute the entire electrical panel system up on the roof. So then we bomb sighted the actual, where we wanted an air terminal to the light design and sort of had to, you know, then you had to optimize the design for the actual position of the lights. And then we had to optimize the design for the position of routing the down conductors. So we had a great advantage that, the, that we could install this product directly in the cable trays without side flashing into the, into the electrical motor cable control systems. The customer doesn't want trip hazards across the top of this, this uh, particular area. It's, you see on a, on a rooftop, of course, you might have a mesh system installed and you'll be left with trip hazards. That's okay on a roof that doesn't actually have anybody occupying and working on it, but these are considered work spaces, so the customer was very critical about having trip hazards, which was another advantage. Now the HVI type products can be installed in the cable tray with no side flash, giving them no trip hazards. So there was a, a collection of, of requirements that the customer was imposing. They're, they're funny that way, they give you limitations. And then ultimately it, it maps to the, where the grounding pigtails at the site are, so we know that we've got suitable earthing pigtails in the, in the layout to get uh, the, you know, everything installed correctly. Okay, so that's these couple of slides. You can go ahead and, and uh, Go back to. We just have to do a mic swap. Yeah, we're going to do a mic swap. Great. Typically, it's been ch show this, show that, show this, show that. So I have a million things open on the laptop there. Maybe that's the, the main reason for the delays. So up to this point in time, we've covered FICO's in depth. I mean, he's covered everything that the IEC standards tells us how to implement a light and protection design. So now we've come to the point where. Um, uh, where, okay, great, um, I've, I've, I've heard everything that FICO said and I'm on board and I understand what the IEC methods show me and how I can implement those methods. But now let's move on and see from a design perspective. If, if you're looking at a client's structure or you're looking at, um, you know, if you're looking at a, a 3D drawing or a 2D drawing, how you can implement a lighting protection design according to that standard. So like Fico said, I'm not going to mention the same things again, an air termination system, a down conductor system, and a grounding system. That's basically the three things we're going to be looking at when we do the design. But first of all, we're going to look at the um, air termination system, and there's three methods, like Fico said, in the standard that we can implement to design the system. And these are the three methods. So if this is my structure, and it's a flat roof, a flat roof structure, you can use what we call the IEC mesh method. And this method means you have meshes on the side and roof of the building 
that comply to these dimensions, um, respect, you know, relevant to the LPL level. And then this is very nice for, um, you know, for an architect that's happy, doesn't have a lot of terminals and stuff on the building. But then if you start having pro um, coolers and chillers and, those, and chimneys and those type of things on the top of the roof, obviously you'll have to include that in your light and protection design. And that's where um, a nice method, which we call the protective angle method, is then used in conjunction with the mesh method, where you can make sure that everything is within this protective angle that the intermination rod is providing you. And then, obviously, uh, the best most, and the conventional method is basically the rolling sphere method, where you can you know, roll the rolling sphere of the, over the structure, and that tells you where to install lightning termination rods. So I can say that the protective angle method, those angles are actually also calculated from the rolling sphere method as well. So implementing the three different methods, you can see I've done the risk analysis. I know I've got an LPL4 system. That means I have to use a rolling sphere of 60 meters and I have a protective angle. And if I'm using the protective angle method, you'll see that for an LPL4, there's where your protective angle changes depending on the height of the bolt of, of, of the air termination rod or the, the height between the air termination rod and your reference, which is the floor or the roof of the building, whatever the case may be. And then there's your mesh sizes as well. And then obviously the next important concept is the down conductor system, which is basically um, providing you with distance um, values, typical distance values that you have to use for those downcomers. Great. That's everything that you need to know to implement the design. So now I want to just show you if, if we go to what we call what we call the um, I wonder if this it's going to allow me to. No, okay. Let me plug in my mouse. Great. So let's talk about design approach. <laughs> okay, let's talk about design approach. So what you see there is basically identify the structure to be protected. The loss values, I determine what those loss values are, I do the risk analysis, and ultimately I install the adequate LPS, and if I don't address the relevant risks, I start the process from the beginning, I'll implement more aspects and then basically provide the protection. So now the question that we're asking is, let's say, let's say I have a structure. So let me get there. There we go. So let's say I have a structure now. And there's the three methods. And I want to implement a rolling sphere on the structure. So a very easy and simplistic way of implementing a design for a rolling sphere is, say we take this building as an example. Let's say I need to protect this building according to LPL4. That means what I will do is I will look at the four corners of the building and I install rods on those four corners of the building. Now I can calculate the distance between that rod and that air termination rod will tell me what is the sag that the rolling sphere is going to have. So let's say the distance between the rods is 20 meters. For an LPL4 system, it means it, it says that the sag of the rolling sphere is going to be 0 0.84 meters. So that means I have to have a lightning air termination rod that's higher than 0 0.84 meters to make sure that the rolling sphere does not sag and touch the building. 
if I cannot if I cannot address that, what is what do I do? I include more air termination rods, try and reduce that distance, and ultimately that's how I'll know that the sack won't touch the building and therefore it's protected. A very simplistic way of doing this. You can use 3D software to do this, but it's a calculation that can be done, as you see here on the right, on, on the left hand side. It's a simple calculation that can be done to make sure that a structure is actually protected by using the rolling sphere method. Then obviously there, if this thing comes back. There's another, the, the protective angle method, there's some tables there that you can also follow in our rate book that you have in front of you that also will guide you in terms of what the protective angle will be for a certain uh, height of air termination rod for a certain LPR level. And now it's just deciding not to come back. So, <laughs> what can I do? Okay. So as you can see here, so as you can see here, if I have a dome light or something installed on top of the building, I can implement those air termination rods, take that distance that I need to have between the air termination rods and actually see what that distance is going to be, and that tells me what's the height of the air termination rod that I can use. If you're going for the protective angle method, this is a very nice method that can also be used, and like I said there in the picture, the rolling sphere is actually used, or the protective angle method is actually derived from the rolling sphere, and, that'll, and you have little tables here in our book that will guide you exactly what the protective angle will be for a certain height of air termination rod and for the different LPR levels. So this is quite handy. I always say to the guys, um, if, I'm, if you're going to site or um, you have to do a quick evaluation for a client, go onto his roof and see what needs, to, what needs to be installed, I always have these two tables with me because that's very nice and, and obviously a distance finder or something like that. It's, it's really nice to quickly be on top of a building, see what the re relevant components on the building are and what you want to protect, and then do those, measure those distances, and it'll be easy to tell a client while you're on the roof that it looks like you're looking at about six rods spaced equivalently, you know, these, these X amount of distances, and that way you can make sure that the rolling sphere does not touch the, the, this, this, the roof of the structure. And the same for a protective angle method. I mean, there you can give the client an idea what the height of the termination rod is relevant to whatever protection method he needs. Great. Um, once that's finished. So we, see, we saw this yesterday as well. Um, we saw this yesterday as well. So typical exam, design example where you have a structure and it's really easy to, when you're on top of this roof, see, or on top of these tanks, you can actually easily see that if I install a lightning rod on this end of the platform, 
I don't need to install anything on this in this region in the middle and only install something on the other side of the platform because if I'm physically there or I'm taking this measurement in the 3D model, I can see that that distance will enable me, the sag of that rolling sphere would not touch that, that, that structure. As well, and you see, I have the same issue here. I mean, you've got the tanks and you have lightning rods on these tanks. And obviously you can see from your measurements and your distance calculations that it's not necessary to install anything on this western side of the structure because everything will be covered by a rolling sphere that's going to run from the one um, air termination rod to the other. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, the IEC provides you with a nice design method methodology where you can really design a very efficient lighting protection system. And, okay, this is just some detailing. I want to get to this picture. And as you can see, like I said, um, the rolling sphere completely covers this entire structure, and you don't need to have any issues like this. Another benefit is um, the IEC also allows us to use natural components, natural down conductor components. So you can use the, natu the natural steelwork of the structure to, you know, if the structure is, or there are a few um, criteria like um, is the structure multi earth multiple places? Um, you have to make sure that those bonding connections at the grounding level is lightning current rated, all those types of things. And that enables you to, to rather use the structure as down comers. But then also um, the IC actually can, you can implement dedicated down conductors as well. So that's that, ex that's that example, design example. I'm... I think I have one more. Well, that's about it. So I don't know if you have any specific questions. Yes. You mean? Uh, Yeah, yeah, I guess, um, so this will be a, So what the customer will receive, will receive normally we, um, we would do the drawings for them like this, and um, we will provide them with a, or we can if they need it, we provide them with a 3D model that we can export to Navisworks. And um, <coughs> we, um, and obviously, you know, um, any other auto, if they need AutoCAD um, component drawings or all those type of things, we can provide that to them as well. But this will be a typical, where's my pointer? This could be a typical, will be a typical design drawing that they would receive. Um, some 3D views, just giving you a sense of the perspective of the site. Not necessarily detail, but just a perspective of the site. What's covered and what's not. Um, so this is my little laptop. It's not my workstation. <laughs> so... <laughs> but yeah, uh, and then basically some planned drawings showing some top top level or high um, top view um, uh, detailing of how everything needs to be um, coordinated, uh, configured, and then on the last page of the design drawings you'll normally have what we have our detailing. So you'll notice that each rod has a designation, a designator. So you get a, a D1, D2, D3, whatever the rod is. And that corresponds directly to the detailing page where uh, you, know, you can go and see what's the relevant detailing that, that's relevant. Ah, oh, that's a, 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 just one plan view. So this is a, a perspective of the overall site, but then obviously we're dividing the site into these different drawings and you can see from the top view where what needs to be placed. And like I said, each one of those rods are a different D value or different detailing value. And you can go to the detailing page and that'll show you the detailing aspects. 
<coughs> I will try and see if I can get the detailing page to load. It's like I said, this is uh, we're talking big projects and small computer power. <laughs> <coughs> Any questions? Yes, yes. Let me let me get you something that was really challenging. Chris will know this. He's our install guy. We once had a project. See if I can find the photos. This was a challenge. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what you see there is a, a, a gas processing plant, and um, obviously, um, installing air termination rods on top of a, these type of you know structures is very difficult. So, what you see there is a, a air termination rod that we installed. We had a, we had an, this is just some downcomers that you see on this um, a water tank that was also part of the process. There you can see also the air termination rod bonded lightning rated to the structure, as well as lightning rated connections from the structure going down to the grounding system. And then also in this specific um, uh, application, we also used HVI rods, HVI air termination rods, you know, to run an HVI conductor uh, um, so not to induce any or let any lightning current run into these PDC structures and control structures. And um, I want to get to that challenging part. Here we go. So, so fortunately, we could find a way to mount these air termination rods on these little tabs that you see on the side of the structure. And you'll, see that you'll notice that we gave the tip a little 45 degree bent as well. As, and that's for that reason we, you know, we had to extend the coverage to the front side of the tank as well, so that we were able to protect um, the front side as well. And something really nice to notice, if I can get a, yeah, you see some uh, SPDs and all those things. Um, I'd, I'm going to try and open up the model, well, design, design pictures. And I just want to show you. Yeah, I know client information is there, but it's fine. I want to show you. So that is the design. And you can see there um, you have EX zones and everything over here. That's why we had um, air termination rods that were out, it tips up one meter outside of the EX zones. That's why they're so significantly high, as well as EX holders and, and conductors trying to you know, run that conductor in the EX zone. And then obviously you have this, these air termination rods that I just showed you on the top portion of these vessels. And what's really what I want, really want to show you is the benefit of having those two high rods there. They were absolutely nothing. Um, we did not need to install anything in this area where there was the highest portion of EX atmospheres as well. So a, a very added benefit, a very nice added benefit of, of, of using the, the IEC method in terms of not needing to install anything in this region because we have these ones at the top. So obviously, obviously because these tanks are so high, these vessels are so high, we could have just used them as sacrificial vessels you know, and they would in any case provide this protection. But now with the air termination system on these vessels as well, we obviously protect that asset as well for the, for the client. So you can see from the rolling sphere calculation that I show you. So this is the typical design drawings 
that the client would see. And you'll see from the rolling sphere calculations, you could, the, we could verify that everything is underneath this um, rolling sphere blanket, including, like you can see there, the front side of these um, vessels due to that 45 degree angle that we changed the tip. So this is a very, if she, if she asked me a, for a challenging design, this was a very challenging design. And over the detailing page is actually now you can see, so um, like I said, each rod re references a certain detailing and the detailing will, will basically address the components that need to be used, the distances that they need to be mounted from. And this is also nice if you have a very nice representative to a 3D model. So we always try, even if we don't get the 3D model from the clients, we try and simulate, you try and you know, simulate that 3D, um, that structure in 3D space as accurate as you possibly can, especially at the points where you want to mount to or you want to connect to. It just makes it easier for the client to understand and for the install team to install. Yes. I mean, the client, the cost of building this system is the customer will use an MSPA 780 approach. What would be the proportion? Look, look, the thing is, and we've seen it many times where we have, you know, different designs. One, we just, we just did a bit recently where um, the one design was an NFPA, the other design was an IEC, and you could see the significant difference in terms of components. And another benefit of, of that is obviously less components is a, is a is lower price, but then also the installation effort is significantly lower as well. So just comp we, we just, uh, as an example, there was a pipe rack that the guys designed. I can maybe show you that. Can, can I, I can probably show that or not. Yeah, I think I can show that. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The same structure, it's a pipe rack that somebody else designed. So an NFPA solution and an IEC solution. Just, just, just see the, the difference that, that this would show you. What do you mean 45? Look, even if I went taller, I still could not, I had to go two or three, maybe four feet taller just to have that rolling sphere cover the, the front. And obviously, um, the taller the rod became, obviously, wind loading and everything became a problem. So, I'm, I, I, because of the height of the building, Going higher, you can imagine if it's a sphere, would not necessarily move the sphere to the, you know, to the right. You'll have to significantly increase height to get that, that um, horizontal distance. So that's the reason why going for a lower, a smaller rod with a 45 degree actually moves it, this, the amount of distance horizontally, horizontally that I need it. So what you see there is what an, an IEC design would look for, a simple metallic structure that somebody else did the design for. So, so you can see there you've got a few tips on the corners, maybe in the middle. Let me just quickly open up the other one as well. Yes. Yeah. 
नहीं सब so just have a look here so there you have an IEC solution for a structure it utilizes what four six lightning rods like I said it was calculated at a certain distance to make sure that the rolling sphere covers it exactly the way it should and what you see here is the equivalent NFPA solution so you see what I mean in terms of material use in terms of installation effort all of those things are a significant factor when you take into consideration the two different design approaches.